Pardon the interruption, but I'm Mike Wilbon, and guess who's back with us after skipping the last three shows? I'm Tony Kornheiser. Is it too late to talk about the Kentucky Derby? Huh? Can we talk yeah, about it? Yeah, probably like you five know, the days season, late. Oh, well, four or five yeah. days late, that's all. By the way, would you like to know this? That the trainer of the winning horse in the Kentucky Derby is a huge PTI fan. McPeak, huge PTI fan. What you'd like Good to, to hear. know. Welcome Good to PTI, to hear. boys and girls. In today's episode, Jamal Murray gets fined. Two hockey games go to OT, and Kevin Weeks joins us for five good minutes. But we begin today with two lopsided NBA playoff games from last night. The Celtics beat Cleveland by 25 points in the opening game of their second round series, and Oklahoma City beat Dallas by 22 points in the opening game of their second round series. Two games without any drama. Will, on which of these series do you expect to eventually become tighter? Um... Maybe. I, I certainly don't have that expectation at all for Celtics Cavaliers. That's not going to become tight. That's a four or five right. game series, despite Donovan Mitchell and whatever heroics he might be able to produce. Nice game with 33 points last night. That series is not going to be tight, and it shouldn't be tight. Now, a lot of folks, and I think our, our, our dear friend Tim Legler, have picked Dallas to beat Oklahoma City. I'm not one of those people. And, I, and part of it, Tony, after seeing last night's game, Luka Doncic, like a lot of people at this time of year, slowed by a leg injury. And when that happens, you know, Oklahoma City's too good. I mean, people know Luka and Kyrie Irving, and they don't know Oklahoma City. Well, get used to them. You know, get yeah. used to watching a great young team with great young players led by Shea Gilgis Alexander, all right, and Jalen Williams. These guys are great. Lou Dort can guard you. Lou Dort is going to be helped by Luka being hobbled a little bit, it seems. But Lou Dort can guard you because he may be the best on-ball defensive player in the league. So, so Oklahoma City got a lot of stuff going. I haven't even mentioned Chet Holmgren. I don't expect Dallas to win that series. I expect Oklahoma City, which is undefeated in these playoffs so far, to win that series. But that series could get tight. It could. Yeah, I'm not going to refute anything you've said. I don't see anything that Boston has to worry about, even without Porzingis. I mean, when you realize that it took Cleveland the full limit to get rid of Orlando, then they're not going to scare Boston. I mean, that series, right. Cleveland Orlando right. was on NBA TV, which is the NBA's way of saying, please don't watch this. So by default, I'm picking Oklahoma City as well. They're a very, very, very young team. They're a very, very good defensive team. But, and here's the only but I can say, they have very limited playoff experience, if any playoff experience, anybody on that team. So they would theoretically appear to be vulnerable to a team with Kyrie Irving, who's won a championship, and Luka Doncic, who's been in the playoffs. But Doncic must be very badly hurt. He had 19 points last night, Mike. 19 is the lowest he's had in two months. He shot from three the last four games, five for 35. Yeah. That's awful. You know, he's, yep. there's something wrong with him. You're, you always give the conventional wisdom that a young team – needs to be beaten and maybe even humiliated to learn what that's like to then go out and, and win. But that doesn't have to happen in the second round. And so I'm not sure that either of those series is going to be tight at all. I'm not sure. Yeah, so it's a good point. And, and on Luca, all those little in-lane shots, that fadeaway shot, they're hitting front rim. He's not getting pushed off. He's shooting the lowest he's ever shot in a stretch of games yeah. from three-point yeah. range. And he's, he, he doesn't want to make an excuse. He's last night, he's like, so what? We lost. But, I, you know, if he's, not, if he's not closer to 100%, eh, Oklahoma City's too good. You're right about them being young, but they seem to not be aware of that just yet. Jamal Murray will not be suspended for Friday night's Game 3 against the Wolves in Minnesota. Instead, the NBA decided to fine Murray 100 grand for throwing a towel and then a heating pad toward an official, and on to the court during the Nuggets' Game 2 blowout loss. Tony, did the league get the punishment right? Okay, so discipline and punishment are touchy and tricky things. They are a balancing act. What Jamal Murray did by throwing first the towel and then the heating pad, which, as you say, got on the court, somebody could have tripped on it, broken an ankle. What he did was childish and petulant, and he looked like a spoiled brat. 
And yep. in the regular season, Mike, I think they'd have sat him down with a suspension. But these are the playoffs. This is where the NBA makes money with eyeballs on the games and ratings matter. Denver's the defending champion. They're down 0-2. They're going to Minnesota. If they don't win both, they're not going to win this series. Jamal Murray has stunk in the playoffs so far. He's shooting 37.5% from the field. He was 3 for 18 in this game we're talking about, which is John Stark's land. But he's the second best player they got. If you take him off the court, you're killing that team. So in the, in the sense of balance for what the playoffs are, I'll say it's okay just to find him and not sit him. I might point out, Tony, that he did win two games in these playoffs. That's right. As much as he That's may have right. stunk statistically Late. so far, he won two games with buzzer beaters and put himself on a short historic list. But now to the punishment. It's, it's weak. It's weak need. And here's why. Jamal Murray, whose exemplary behavior has characterized his career. This is the first run-in. Jamal Murray didn't have run-ins. It's not Draymond Green, okay? But he threw something at an official. He did. He had intent. He threw this thing at Mark Davis. There's no, there's no denying that. I don't want to get a call from the league office saying, how do you know? We all know. Don't think we're stupid. So what does he have to do? Does he have to hit the official? He threw something at an official. If you bump an official in any sport, you're suspended. So he That's threw right. something at him, and the league lets it go. I've been going back and forth on this because Richard Jefferson, like you, made a really compelling case about postseason and regular season. And I get that, Tony, and I lean that way until I think one more time, not only could he have hurt players on the court, a teammate or an opponent, he threw something at I get an it. official. Mike, I, get, I get it. I get it. And I'll just be very brief about this. He did that. But if you want to keep him in the game, you can say nobody got hurt. It didn't hit anybody. Nobody got hurt. And we can have him in the playoffs if you want to do that. You think it's weak. I think it's a delicate balance. Let's move to hockey. Both of last night's playoff games produced noteworthy comebacks. New York Rangers at home came back from being down 2-1 and then 3-2 to force one overtime and then another. The Rangers won in double overtime to run their playoff winning streak to six games so far. Colorado spotted Dallas a 3-0 lead in the first period in Dallas and came back to win in one overtime 4-3 as well. Wilbon, which team impressed you more? I'm going back and forth on this one, Tony. I did 3 nothing. I mean, it, when I looked up, and it was 2 nothing. I had this game with no sound on in the corner, just kind of keeping it on. It's 2 nothing. I go, I'm, I'm going to Perry Mason reruns. I've seen enough of this. It's 2 nothing. <laughs> They're on the road. They're not going to come back. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on there. What? This game is now tied. It was, it's stunning. And you go to the, the, the Rangers came back twice in that game. And shesterkin has been so, so good and the number of shots that he is stopping <clears throat> regularly, consistently, that you just go, I mean, wow, can anybody dent him? He can, they can come back from anything because he's not going to allow but so many goals and keep them in the game. I think I'm still yeah. going to go with coming back from a 3 nothing deficit on the road. It's good that you mentioned Perry Mason. This is the one game in which Hamilton Berger would have gotten the winning goal <laughs> had you not been around on that. Look, um, I rooted for the Rangers as a kid. The Islanders did not exist until I got a job at Newsday as a sports writer. I know the Rangers' history. It stinks. They've won one Stanley Cup in the last 84 years. That, 94. That's it. That's the Messier Cup in 1994. So when I see the Rangers doing well, and they are doing well, part of me says, well, something bad's going to happen because it happened in 83 out of 84 years. I agree with you. I'm, I'm going to go with, with the Colorado thing. Because you cannot win that game. You cannot win no. a playoff game on the road when you're down 3 nothing. It's impossible. The other team has to lose that game to a degree. And that's what Dallas did. I understand that Colorado has done this five times this year. Come back from three goals or that's more they do. and won. They but there score. is something about it that seems decisive when you do it on the road in the playoffs. And yeah. I know that Dallas has lost yeah. opening games and still won the series. But... This seemed almost catastrophic yeah, I wonder to me. If Let's take a momentum break. From this too, you yes. wonder if there will be coming up. Jeremy Swayman is out there laughing and singing songs while starring for the Bruins. We're going to ask Kevin Weeks about that. We'll also ask him about the hit.
that Jacob Truba thankfully whiffed on last night. My God. Mike, I, I, I know you identify the, with Hamilton Burke. I know I Jamal you Murray has won two games, but three for 18 last night. Max, yeah, that was you know, right. 37 point slam, five from the field. Let's get back into the NHL playoffs with our great friend ESPN hockey analyst Kevin Weeks. Let me start with this. The Bruins and the Panthers are back on the ice tonight. This will be Jeremy Swayman's seventh start in a row. Teammates are now describing him as smiling, laughing, and singing songs while in net. Singing songs. You were a goalie. How do you see Swayman? Well, first of all, I I love the way Swayman's playing, and I can certainly relate with that. Anytime you're in a zone... It just feels like the game slows down. And for a goalie, you have to process 98% of the game in front of you. And for Jeremy Swayman, he's making all the right moves. He's calm. He's composed. Every one of his teammates raves about him. And the fact that he's that locked in, that in between plays, he's able to sing to himself, smile, laugh. He's not getting rattled. That's a stone-cold goalie right now that's locked in. And that's exactly what he's been to this point for the Boston Bruins. Kevin, can you remember yourself singing in net? Did you ever get to that point? I did. I did. I can remember, remember that in some games, some big games, as a means to just try to keep myself calm, especially in between plays and after stoppages. Now, not loud enough for the players to hear. Maybe some of the fans <laughs> that were behind the net, they might be able to hear it a little bit. But, yes, at certain times I've done that. Those little affirmations, they just kind of keep you loose. And as a goalie, it's interesting. You want to be dialed in. You want to be – hyper-focused, but at the same time, you can't be too uptight. You need to be able to flow and to be able to relax. If you're too uptight, you're locked up. Then you got to unlock yourself to make a save. So uh, I love that zone that Jeremy Swayman's in right now. It's fun to watch. Um, Oilers Canucks start their series tonight. I hate that, you know, one of the two remaining Canadian teams has to get eliminated, but that's the way this is going to go. Who are you favoring in that series? Whoo! Woo! Woo! I think it's going to go six, maybe seven, but I got the Oilers for this reason. The Edmonton Oilers have two game breakers in Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl. McDavid's the fastest player we've ever seen play. He's already one of the best players we've we've ever seen play. When the great Wayne Gretzky tells me, and he did numerous times, and he has since, we see 97 in my old club is special. That's when you know he is special. So his ability to break games open, play at the pace he plays, and then the great German and Leon Dreisaitl, number 29, can slow it down. He's a little bit more off speed. And when he's got the puck, he makes plays, but he can really manipulate the defender. So their ability to have two game breakers, two league MVPs on the same team, to me that gives the Oilers the slight edge in that all-Canadian matchup. I'm going to go away from the playoffs for one second, Kevin, and ask you about the Sharks winning the draft lottery last night presumably taking Macklin Celebrini. Is he a game? I see a franchise-changing player, and it, presuming he's chosen first, who do my Blackhawks, who are they going to be left with to choose second? Oh, I see how you set me up with that. I'm about to walk out. You set me up with that. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> Macklin Celebrini, first of all, he, I believe, has all the tools to be a franchise-changing player for sure. Second of all, He came in an NCAA college hockey and shredded it up as a 17-year-old. Can you tell me the last hooper that was able to shred up NCAA college basketball at 17? And then win the player of the year? And then win the player of the year? So he won NCAA hockey's Hobie Baker for player of the year. So that tells you just how dominant he is. He's unafraid of the stage. His dad works for his work for the Warriors. He's listened to the likes of Steve Kerr, Draymond. Steph Curry and everybody else. So he's unafraid of all of the other things that go around being a professional athlete. He's accustomed to them. He's grown up in it. So that's not going to phase him. But his skill set allows him, I believe, from what I saw at BU and my former teammate, Jay Pandolfo, who's the head coach there, I think he has a chance to be franchise changing. For the Blackhawks, I think it's either uh, Demidov, the young Russian forward, who's super skilled and a game breaker too, or it could be the defenseman at Michigan State, Left Shunov, who's very, very good as well. That's who I think the Blackhawks are looking at in the two spot. We're so tired of the Blackhawks. 
And by no, we, I mean me. I'm just so no, tired not. of talking oh. about the Blackhawks and their draft no, picks year after year after year. Year, stop. Oh, man. All right, let's move on. We'll get you out of here on this. We want to ask you about one particular moment in last night's Rangers-Hurricanes game. I know you watched it ten times. When you watch Jacob Truba trying to take out Martin Natchez, what do you see? I'll tell you what I see. First of all, having played for both teams, but I'll just say with the home team as a member of the New York Rangers, sometimes you can hear the train at Penn Station underneath the floor or the ice at the garden. That, but we have never seen a train come off the tracks and come up to the <laughs> garden. That's what I saw yesterday. The Truba train came off the tracks, came unhinged at Penn Station, and it launched itself in the garden yesterday. Jacob Truba is one of the hardest hitters in the league. Everybody knows that. And when you're matched up against him, you always have to have your head up. And narrowly, Marty Natchez was able to escape that. But the Truba tracks came off the train, or the train came off the tracks, rather. And I can tell you what, it was a near miss for Marty Natchez. And thankfully, he's okay. Jacob Truba is a bad, bad man. That's a tough guy to face. Thank you, Kevin. Although I'd like to call you Weeksy. If Gretzky calls you Weeksy, we're going to call you Weeksy. <laughs> Kevin, you appreciate should. it. Yeah, man. Thanks so much, fellas. Thanks for having me. Let's take one last break. Still to come, Justin Verlander does something he's never done as an Astro. And Willie Adamas makes good on a promise. Don't don't try to be tired so, of the Blackhawks. Don't 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 go I'm there. Tired of them. Just because we're tired on our way we back. We talk about them too much. No, talk we don't. We don't talk about I know them at that. All. I know the train sound. I mean, I've been in Penn Station enough with the Knicks and the Rangers. I know yeah. the train. Happy time, people. Happy 24th birthday, Michael Penix Jr. Sneaky old for a rookie. Penix was a starting quarterback who got the University of Washington to the national championship, where they were beaten by J.J. McCarthy and Michigan. Penix was rated behind Caleb Williams, Jaden Daniels, and Drake May on most draft boards. But the shock wasn't that Penix was drafted in the top third of the first round. The shock was who drafted him, Atlanta. Atlanta, which had just signed Kirk Cousins as a free agent, and give him $100 million guaranteed. The Falcons later put out all sorts of rationalizations for doing this, but most people see it as potentially combustible. See it as a blueprint for how to create controversy. You know I mean? You do that in this day and age with social media and players tweeting and on Instagram and giving their reactions to everything. You're going to have controversy. They must know that. Doesn't seem like they do. Happy anniversary, Catfish Hunter. This is posthumous, but on this day 56 years ago, the Oakland A's star right-handed pitcher pitched a perfect game in which he drove in three of Oakland's four runs in the 4 nothing win over Minnesota. That game was scoreless until the seventh inning. On the mound, Hunter was perfect. At the plate, almost as good. He got three hits and drove in a run in the seventh with a squeeze bunt, two more in the eighth with a bases loaded single. Hunter's in the Hall of Fame. 224 and 166 with a 3.26 ERA. Plus, he was a 2.26 hitter, which is great for a pitcher. Man. Hunter was on five World Championship teams with the A's and the Yankees. Tony, back then, when a pitcher did like a perfect game, the world stopped. There was the NHL and NBA playoffs were over by this point. There was no fake NFL news to dominate the airwaves. When somebody threw a perfect game, that was the new, that was it. Especially if it wasn't on a Saturday going against the Kentucky Derby or somewhere. That was it, man. I remember that I was nine years old. It's like the world stopped because Catfish Hunter had done what he did. Happy trails to last night's game for the Royals. Kansas City had a two-run lead in the top of the ninth when Milwaukee's Willie Adamas found the spotlight. Adamas had been chatting up Royals fans behind the Brewers' dugout all game. With two on and two out, Adamas was in the on-deck circle still yapping. Quote, they told me they wanted me to hit a three-run homer, Adamas said later. And I was like, I got you. Adamas then proceeded to drill a curveball from Royals closer James MacArthur into the left field bullpen. Boom, go ahead, homer. Cold shot, go ahead, homer. Quote, oh my God, it's the coolest thing I've ever done. It's going to be a long summer, I think, between the Brewers and the Cubbies. I hate the cheeseheads in more than one sport. By the way, James MacArthur, that name, wasn't he like co-star of the original Hawaii 5 Actor. 
Yes, I'm just, he was an you know, actor. I'm going way back again, like yes. Gary Mason, way back. Helen Hayes' son, I believe. I've dated myself beyond words. Let's go wow. to the big finish. Let's Champions League semi today. Real Madrid beat Bayern Munich 2-1 in Madrid. Your reaction? Wow. Madrid scored in the 88th and 91st minutes to come back and win. And I think there was a goal that was disallowed, offside, something even later. Justin Verlander gave up seven earned over five to the Yanks yesterday. Cause for concern. He had a 208 ERA going in. If he does it three times, yes. Not now. Candace Parker has been named president of Adidas Women's Basketball. Your thoughts? This seems brilliant. Uh, Adidas it hasn't been in the game, in the shoe game like the others, particularly Nike. And Candace Parker going to get them back in the game. Watch. Brave starter Chris Sale pitches against the Red Sox tonight. Your expectations? He's 4-1. and one. I expect him to be great against his former team. Last one, Rudy Gobert won his fourth Defensive Player of the Year award. Is it deserved? Yeah, I certainly voted for him, Tony. Wimbanyama finished second. Anthony Davis third. Somebody check me on Helen Hayes' kid. Whisper in my ear. We're out of time. We're trying to do better the next time. Tom Dolk, shout out. I'm Mike Wilbon. Same time tomorrow, Knuckleheads. You can get the PTI podcast on the ESPN app or Apple Podcasts. And now, James McCarthy. That's going way back, man. Like I was right. Some years. Nobody remembers Helen Hayes. Not even you, Wilbon. Here's Sports Center. All right, Wilbon. Which team has more pressure to win tonight, the Knicks or the Pacers? Tony, I think the Pacers do. And I'm not going to sit here and say the Pacers can't go home if they were down 0-2 and win two games at home, because they could. And that's a distinct home court advantage each of these teams has, playing in Madison Square Garden and playing in whatever they're calling the building in Indy these days, which is the best basketball arena in the NBA in Indy. But I, I think the Pacers need to win tonight, and they – Look, Tyrese Halliburton, who had a great first half of the season and then was sort of unraveled a little bit by a hamstring injury, he, like Luka Doncic, their teams can't win without them being great. And so Halliburton, the pressure's on him to be great tonight. He's going to have to have like a Joel Embiid on one leg effort, and then six points ain't going to get it. The Pacers aren't going to be able to win with that. I know this is unfair asking a guy who's legitimately injured to be a star and be himself, but they're going to need that effort from him and production. A 20-point night, a 10-assist-plus night if they're going to win that game. You let Jalen Brunson go out there and dictate the terms of this game and get the Knicks up 2-0, and chances are the Knickerbockers are going to advance to play the Celtics in the Eastern Conference Finals. Yeah, the pressure on Indiana to win is to even the series, but I agree with you that Indiana is fully capable of going home and winning two in a row, and then it's a three-game series. So I will tell you that there is a specific kind of pressure on the Knicks that you might not think of because you're what? not a Knicks fan, and that is to avoid the Reggie Miller moment because it's Indiana. Ooh. Just because Ooh. it's Indiana is what I'm talking about. So I think yeah. that ratchets up a little bit. And I think that there is enormous pressure on Jalen Brunson, who is scoring 40 a game routinely in the playoffs, and not that he has to score 40 again, Mike, but we have seen over the last couple of weeks that Jalen Brunson is as important to the Knicks as any player is to his own team. He's right yep. at the top of that food yep. chain. You're right. So that's where I think all the pressure lays down on the Knicks, on Jalen Brunson. Yeah. No, Tony, I'm not going to disagree with you on Brunson. That's why that matchup Brunson-Halliburton is so important. You and I were at a lot of those Knicks-Pacers Knicks games. They were... Those series were yep. so great, and yep. there was so much pressure on every game, and people have no idea. I, 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 Reggie Miller's doing the game tonight. I would like to be in the garden just to talk to Reggie about his memories. You, you were at the most famous of those yep. games. Wow, yep. if we could get yep. one game to approximate any of those games, what a treat it would be. That's it. We're done reminiscing. Back to you.